Okay, in this part of the body system unit, we're going to be looking uh, at the next group. We're going to focus on the skeletal system. All right, the skeletal system is going to include not only the bones, but also the cartilage and ligaments that help uh, hold those bones together, cushion the movement of those bones. Um, and this is actually going to tie into the next system we'll look at as well. But here we go. Let's look at some of this stuff. We know that the skeletal system, we know we have a skeleton, we know it's our endoskeleton, okay? As far as our vertebrates go, every vertebrate organism on the planet, planet is going to have an endoskeleton. Uh, its function, support, protection, helps with movement, and actually provides uh, blood cell formation. It's a site where our, our blood cells are replenished and reproduced. Um, for support, we know that it helps, it works in in concert with all the other systems, but it actually is going to give that internal support. That way when movement occurs, your systems uh, maintain structure and maintain balance with each other. It is going to provide protection for the internal organs. Okay, so the, the most vital organs are going to be protected by uh, the rib cage, which is found in, in the torso. Okay. Um, so your lungs and your heart, um, and so some of the most vital parts of the uh, of the organs, the spinal cord, the spinal cord, where uh, those bundle of nerves that help transport information from the brain into the brain is going to be uh, protected by the vertebrae, so the spinal column, um, and then our blood cells, our red blood cells and white blood cells, are going to be replenished and reproduced. Uh, within our bones as well. Uh, we're going, we use up blood just like we use up skin cells, okay? So once those old blood cells get used up and they get discarded, you need new blood cells and the side of new blood cell formation would be in the bones. And we actually have about 206 bones found uh, in, an, in an adult body. Now adult versus uh, infant, uh, those bones are going to be a little different as far as uh, structure goes, because adult bones have hardened, have calcified uh, to provide the structure for a larger system, whereas infant bones are going to be softer and more flexible because the organism is still growing during infancy, uh, toddlers, um, juvenile um, eras until it reaches adulthood. So the bone density will be a little different. Okay, so let's look at um, some parts of our skeleton. The axial skeleton, this is a part of the skeleton that includes the skull, the uh, vertebral column, and your ribs and sternum. Okay, so if you're looking at this picture, the upper part of the skeleton minus the uh, shoulders and arms, you have the skull, the vertebral column, and then the ribs is going to make up the axial skeleton. Your appendicular skeleton is going to be all the other bones. So your shoulder bones, your arm bones, your pelvis, your legs, feet, hands. Okay, all of those bones are going to be a part of the appendicular skeleton. There are cells found within the bones that are called osteoblasts, and these osteoblasts are where new bone is produced. Okay, um, so as bone growth occurs, new bone is produced in this area. As bones get worn down, uh, they will be replaced by uh, new bone growth through the osteoblast. With inside a, a bone, there is a fatty tissue, a fatty substance called um, bone marrow. Okay, depending on depending on the health of of the organism, uh, whether it be a, a deer or a bear or us as humans, depending on the, our health, will determine how healthy that bone marrow is. And if it has a lot of lipid um, parts in it, a lot of fat buildup, or if it's more dry and less healthy. Uh, but the bone marrow is going to be found within a bone. You have red bone marrow, which produces your red blood cells, your RBCs. Okay, so the red bone marrow part of the bone inside is going to uh, make new red blood cells. Um, <clears throat> and then there is a yellow, um, it's, it's more a, a, of a lipid look, a color to it, uh, where your uh, white blood cells are going to be 
uh, produced. Um, ossification. This process is when bone is going to form from cartilage. Okay, sometimes you do have cartilage that is produced first, and then it, it, is, it ossificates, okay, or changes into bone. Um, as far as this picture, your 206 bones, you definitely want to be familiar with uh, the main ones. I'm not going to um, go into detail about all of the different types of bones found with just in the hand, or all the different types of bones found with just in the feet, and there are a lot of different types um, within these, especially within the... Uh, the part of the hand um, right above the wrist and right below the fingers, okay, uh, where your palm is, for example, there's a lot of different types of bones. Uh, but the main bones you want to be familiar with, the cranium, uh, mandible is the lower jaw bone, maxilla is the upper jaw bone where your cheekbones are, uh, clavicle is going to be your um, collarbone, okay, you have one on each side. Remember, we are bilateral in symmetry. Um, so your clavicle, you have your scapula, which is your shoulder blade, so your shoulder blades that you can, some people can pop those out more than others, but your shoulder blade is a scapula, okay, your, um, obviously ribs, sternum is that breastplate, okay, your upper arm is called the humerus, and then you have two arms in your forearm region, this, uh, the one on the side that's connected where your thumb is, is called the radius, and the other bone that's on the side with your pinky is called the ulna. Your vertebrae, okay, your spinal column, your vertebrae. Then you have the pelvis, okay, your hips. The largest uh, bone in the body, okay, the longest bone in the body is going to be the femur. This is your thigh bone. Um, your kneecap, okay, that bone is called the patella. Then you have two bones in your lower leg. Uh, the larger of the two is going to be the tibia. It is on the side of of your big toe, if you want to think about it that way, the tibia. And then the smaller bone uh, found in your leg is going to be the fibula. So those are the main bones you want to be uh, familiar with. Now, as far as hands and feet, we categorize those uh, more generally because there's so many. Um, but you have carpals, which would be your wrist, um, the bones, um, right above your wrist uh, in your hand uh, in your palm area then you have metacarpals which are the longer uh, which are the bones um, right above your palm right above your first knuckles and then you have phalanges which are the uh, which are the uh, uh, finger extinction uh, extensions at the top and the same thing with the feet you have the tarsals uh, the ankle and four bones, and then you have the metatarsals, which are the longer bones within the foot, and then you have your phalanges, which are going to be part of your, your toes. So carpals, and then tarsals for feet, and or for hands and then feet. Okay, let's look at our joints. We do have different types of joints that form between the, the bones, where the bones connect. Okay, uh, the joints are there for movement, so where a bone connects to a bone, you will have a lot of times a joint that forms. Uh, these joints can be immovable or fixed, which means they don't move at all, or they they move so slightly that they you would never notice their movement. Like in your skull, your cranium, it, it is made up of different bones, but they are in a fixed position. You have slightly movable joints. They have restricted movement, but they can still move. Maybe they move in one direction and they don't move very far like your vertebrae that surrounds your spinal column, you can move those, okay, but you don't, you don't have um, free movement or free flexibility. They are restricted to maybe uh, one direction uh, and uh, maybe just uh, a certain degree of movement as well. And then you have your freely movable joints. These uh, joints, you have movement in at least two directions, uh, sometimes more, very flexible movement, a wide range of motion. Uh, with your freely movable joints. And so in this picture is just some examples. Where your humerus, your upper arm, connects to your scapula, your shoulder okay, joint is going to be called, uh, this shoulder joint is known as a ball and socket joint. The ball part of the humerus is fitting into a socket that is built within the, the shoulder or the scapula. Okay, and it rotates kind of like a ball and socket. So if you were to move your arm, you can move it forwards and backwards, 
You can rotate it up and down. Some people, their their muscle and cartilage flexibility is a little bit better, and they can actually rotate at 360 degrees. But you have a good wide range of motion with your ball and socket. Uh, another type of joint is going to be called the hinge joint. This is where your elbow uh, is. Your elbow is a type of hinge joint. So if you look at this picture, your your lower part of your humerus, and then the upper part of your ulna. Um, where your elbow forms, this is going to be considered a hinge joint. It has only one direction of movement. Okay, so this is going to be considered a, a uh, not necessarily a free moving, but a restricted movement. But it still has movement. Um, then in your hands, you have types of, you have more than one type of joint. Uh, you can have a, a plane or a planar type joint where they, they slide across each other within the hand, within the bones in your in your palm. You can have something called saddle joints, where uh, it kind of rides like this, or fits like the saddle fits on a horse, and that would be where your thumb connects to your hand. And then on the uh, in the joints between your uh, fingers, okay, those knuckles that are that form, these are called ellipsoidal joints. So if you think if you if you try to move them, they do have kind of a two direction movement that they can move. Um, allows for gripping and grasping um, uh, those types of joints, and then a uh, a fourth type of of joint uh, known as the pivot joint. This is going to be found um, also also can be found in your uh, elbow area. Now the pivot and the hinge can also be found in your um, in your knee joint. Okay, uh, but this is where uh, the ulna and radius kind of fit together okay uh, almost like a, a lock and key before they connect to the humerus and that allows for your arm to pivot left to right uh, as well as as up okay so these these are all examples of freely movable joints even though some might be more restricted it would seem they're all considered freely movable joints Okay, the structure of a joint. Here's how it all gets put together. Um, you have cartilage that covers uh, the surface of the bones, where the bones meet. Okay, the the cartilage is going to be there to help protect the the, the, the ends of those bones, so they don't wear down as quickly, so they don't rub together and, and cause friction and cause bones to to fragment and pieces of bone to break apart. You have those issues. Um, then you have a uh, you have things called like bone spurs or bone fragments that would occur. Uh, it would cause a lot of pain and movement, like if you walk or if you move your uh, arms, wherever those, uh, wherever the cartilage has been broken down between the joints. And sometimes the pain can be severe enough to where you would have to go in and they'd have to remove those, uh, th those pieces, those fragments, or or shave down those spurs. Um, but this is where you have uh, absence of cartilage because the cartilage cartilage deterioration over time. But cartilage is there to add for add protection so the bones don't wear down, they don't rub together. Um, there are ligaments that are going to hold bones to bones. Okay, so you have ligaments that are stretching over the the ends of each bone that form a joint, uh, enclosing the cartilage. Um, there are capsules filled. Uh, these these capsules are like uh, little sacks of fluid that are also going to be found within the joints. Um, and these little these little capsules, then the type of fluid is called synovial fluid. But these little capsules found within the joints um, are going to be there to add lubrication to make sure that movement occurs um, f as free as possible. Okay, the more lubrication there is, the the, the less friction there will be as far as buildup goes.